name. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, she is one of my favorite people on planet Earth. Um, she helps real estate agents create uh, seven-figure businesses. Or uh, did I say that right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she runs a rocking Facebook group, um, and uh, and she made over a hundred thousand dollars from one simple post uh, that we teach inside of our Authority Accelerator program, and she absolutely rocked it. Got over five hundred comments and did an amazing job responding back to those comments. And I want to go through that process and her Facebook group and um, also you've been doing some pretty awesome stuff with the current changes in the environment and speaking to those, uh, the current issues. So I want to get into that as well. Okay. Um, but if you guys get any value at any time, hit that heart button, hit that like button, helps the algorithm, helps us out um, and uh, helps reach more people. Um, so Jessica, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It was it's my pleasure. I uh, I just want to dive into the process because yeah. we initially met in another mastermind um, mm -hmm. and you took some of the concepts that I was teaching in that mastermind uh, to start growing your Facebook group. But what what has that journey, what has that experience been growing your, your Facebook group, growing your audience uh, on Facebook? Yeah, for sure. So um, I met Andrew at like a dinner. I, he was sitting at a bar. I like walked up behind him and I was like, hi, I'm Jess. And we like, it was, it was like the cutest thing ever. He was, he was, that was at Morton Steakhouse. Yeah, it was, it was. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and he, and, and, and I had gone to this training that you've done and I was like, you know, I have this like pending Facebook group. And just from the stuff that you told me to do, there's like 300 people waiting, but I am terrified to open the doors. And yeah. you were like, oh my, like you basically just gave me crap and you were like, just do it. <laughs> and, and I did the next day I opened it up and I just started, I just started kind of following whatever you'd said in that training and it grew and grew and grew and grew. Um, it's only been, it's been less than two years since I've had that group open and it's uh, essentially 13,000 now. Um, and we are very picky about who is in that group. So like, there's no marketers in that group. There's no mortgage brokers in that group. It hasn't been like, we've, there's absolutely no one that is not an active real estate agent that's in that group. Yeah. So, so like, like it's grown quickly and it's been really awesome. And it's had, we've at no point kind of muddied the waters with like anybody who any of that content wouldn't be completely relevant to. Mm-hmm. And uh, what is initially starting out, how did you get traffic into your Facebook group? So um, I, 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 and I still have my Facebook group on the thank you page when someone downloads my lead magnet. So I do run paid traffic. It, does that necessarily get like the most traffic to it? Probably not. I would say that like the majority of the, of my members come from the suggested group sidebar. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And yeah, just walk me through the process of um, actually, let's just start with growing your business. Yeah. I'd like to kind of start from the beginning um, sure. of how did this all come about and how do you start creating offers online? Yeah. So I was a real estate agent for 15 years. Um, and you know, I had a very successful real estate business. I was one of the, like, especially as a, as a female, I was probably one of the top producing realtors period in the Toronto real estate market, which is a very booming market. Um, and I just kind of had a bit of like an existential crisis. And one day was like, I'm not doing what I want to do for the rest of my life. I kind of fell into real estate. My mom's been a realtor for 35 years. I kind of grew up in the business and I fell into it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I just kind of realized one day I was like, I need location independence. I was like, mm -hmm. I cannot be stuck in Toronto, especially mm -hmm. in the winters. I just, I started getting, I started like having all of these things that just weren't quite fitting and quite gelling anymore in my life. And I think you, with anything, you get to a point where you make a certain amount of money and you're, and then everything gets reevaluated, <laughs> right? You're just like, well, what, what am I actually doing with my life? So um, I made the decision to trans to to basically transfer my business. I completely shut down my real estate business and I started taking on like one on one clients mm -hmm. in terms of, like in terms of real estate agents and just wanted to kind of test the waters. I never coached before. I didn't like I was it was one of those things that I was like, I got to figure out if, if this is what I want to do. 
Yeah. Um, and I loved it. And so I very, very quickly started building out a group program because I am a business builder at heart. And for me, I was like, I need to be leveraged. Like the very first thing that I knew was like, I need to be leveraged. I do not want, I, bur I, I built a, a, a business in real estate early on that I burnt myself out like crazy. Mm -hmm. So I knew what I didn't want. And I knew that I was going, I was going to go down that road if I didn't set myself up properly right from the beginning. Yeah. Um, so I did, I built up my programs called the listings lab and um, we've run we run many, many hundreds of hundreds of people through that program. And mm -hmm. it's basically geared around like digital marketing and building relationships at scale is usually what I tell people. Like if you want to go from six to seven figures by building relationships at scale, this isn't just lead generation and conversion of leads. Um, then that's what we do. So we do that. And then, and then it, it kind of snowballed when I joined your, your pro, when I, I joined, authority accelerator. When yeah. I joined your authority accelerator program, um, one of the first things Andrew was like, you have to have another offer. And I was like, but my current offer is so awesome. <laughs> like, what do you mean? So I did build out another offer. And since then we actually have four offers now, which has been awesome. So we have like our, our lower end offer, which is like very automated. I have very little to do with that. And it's, mm -hmm. it's for new agents to get them organically to six figures. Mm -hmm. We've got the listings lab, which is like kind of our like premium core offer, which mm -hmm. is like the, the six to seven figures, digital, like digital marketing, get online, build relationships. Mm -hmm. And then we now have our two like higher end programs that are basically like our team in your business, yeah. which is honestly so fulfilling and also so fun <laughs> right and those are multiple five-figure investments yeah. I'm, I'm assuming yeah. um and uh and yeah i i had a similar experience launching my uh higher ticket multiple five-figure investment where you just like are constantly learning about like the the little tweaks in uh those people's businesses that will make a massive leap forward well and, and that's the thing and i think this is just business in general i think a lot of people think that they need to to grow they have to essentially like like shift 180 degrees and mm -hmm. a lot of the time it's three degrees yeah right yeah. you're yeah. doing most of it right it's just that yeah. like what are the things that like actually do need to pivot or do need to shift and I mean, it's, it's been the same thing through this whole COVID situation as well. Like people are thinking, oh my God, I got to blow up my entire business and create something new for mm -hmm. what, however long this time period is. And you don't. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's something, and, and we're going to get to the, the post, the mission post in a second here. Yeah. Um, but I want to, uh, I want to talk about that because you've created what's uh, essentially a, a life raft offer, not selling the yacht, but how to mm -hmm. fix uh kind of the problems that are currently going on uh with your audience mm -hmm. um and you did a was it one day or two day live event um uh, it, my my original live event or like my virtual live event your virtual live event yeah so we did a virtual event last weekend that was um it was one day it was six 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 and a half hours yeah and uh, you had how many people there? We had 185 people come. On. Yeah, that's awesome. All from my Facebook group. Yay! It, did uh, how many posts did you put up for uh, to get 180 people Three. today? Three posts. You got 180 people. Three hundred dollars a piece. That's awesome. Yeah, Woo! and then we sold into a, into a workshop, uh, like basically like a content intensive workshop that we're doing this weekend. That's awesome. Yeah. One thing I want to talk about too, before we hop into the the mission post, yeah. is um, the higher end program. And what has happened for me was launching that higher end program that I called Authority Accelerator Elite at the time. Now it's seven mm -hmm. CEO, but being able to bring in those higher level clients at a higher ticket price point and generating and and being able to give more because you're charging more. Um, uh, and bringing in monthly reoccurring revenue mm -hmm. really changed how I operated my business um, and allowed me to hire more over the past year since I launched it. And you just launched your high ticket program last month. Yeah. Right. Um, so what has that been experience, experience been 
in your your first month of launching your your I don't know what to call it, ultra high ticket program. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah. So, so we have two levels of it. I think you do too. We have we have like our seven figure real like it's it's essentially like the the seven figure agent collective and then the seven figure agent accelerator. So the collective is like is like the 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 lower of the highest ticket, and then the yeah. and then the accelerator is like the highest highest ticket, which is which is the only one that actually has one on one access to me. Nice. Um, so so that's been it's been it's been awesome because I'm having high level conversations that I normally yeah. don't have. Right. Kind of weeds people out. Yeah. Yeah, and and I and it's the 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 most fun part of it is for me to be able to say like. Like we're solving different kinds of problems in this program. We're building systems and automation, and and we were doing all of that in the lead generation and in like the marketing side of it. But now we're doing it in like we're doing it in hiring. We're doing it like we're actually digging into like core values and like vision and like things like that, which we don't get to in a group setting. Yeah. So, that part of it's also been really really cool, and I'm finding too like the more that I learn the better the program is going to get because yeah. like the like like they're i'm doing in my business the same stuff that we're doing in their real estate business we're just i'm just like it, it's kind of awesome because like i'm just so many steps i'm just a couple of steps ahead at this point yeah yeah which i think is like such a different experience i mean i've done what they're wanting to do in real estate but i'm also like th with this business it's i'm i'm not that far ahead so it's just, it's been really cool. It's been, it's been a really cool experience. And I honestly, and I, this was surprising. I didn't have to, I really didn't have to hire that much. Um, I had, uh, I have the best team, like the best team ever. And um, some of them weren't like, they had more space. Mm -hmm. So I just gave them more and paid them more. <laughs> That's awesome. Which has been yeah. great for them too. Yeah. And what I've found with building out my team is being able to take them from part time to full time yeah. really gets them more motivated. For sure. Um, so that's that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that experience. I want to dive into the post uh, yeah. and your experience putting it up. Uh, and I'm going to see if I can pull it up in your Facebook group. I know it might be a little bit buried. It might be buried, uh, but I think if you type in mission, you'll be able to find it because I've only done one. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. Um, but, uh, uh, so Jessica joined our authority accelerator program and I was so happy because we had a previous, uh, like we knew each other and we're really good yeah. friends from a previous, um, uh, mastermind, but I was like, just get in here. Like we can create some quick wins. Uh, and you put up, uh, what I call the mission post, um, and absolutely crushed it. So I'm going to pull it up right here, but what was your experience with putting up the post? Why was it effective? Mm -hmm. Um, what, were there anything, anything that came up that you like, should, uh, that you'd like to talk about it? So to just kind of preface all the stuff that Andrew teaches all led to why this did so well. It wasn't just because like I wrote the perfect post. It yeah. was, it was because like I had grown the audience, nurtured the audience, the audience knew like and trusted me. Like this was like everything kind of builds on itself. So from that, and honestly, like from that initial free training that Andrew gave, plus the stuff that I, that he, that I, that I learned in, in Authority Accelerator, plus like just over the years, like me picking Andrew's brain, like it was basically like everything kind of led to that. And, you know, I remember, you know, one of the first things he said is he's like, I want, I just, just throw a mission post out there. And if there's one thing that I can say that I do well is I execute. Yeah. So like, I was like, okay, like fine. I'm, and I, and I understand my audience very deeply. Like I've, I have been my own ideal client in the past. So it is actually a lot mm -hmm. easier for me than I think for a lot of marketers, because I can literally say, okay, where was I and what would I have need to, needed to see or hear at that point? So I wrote the mm -hmm. mission. I honestly, I scheduled it. So I didn't even remember that it was going out. It was just one of those things that was like, it was scheduled. And I, I, 
And then I was, I think I was on a call and my Facebook notification started. And I was like, <laughs> what is going on in my Facebook group? And I opened it and I was like, holy crap, like what is happening? And it was just a really simple, it was, I, I actually did it I, like a two part mission post. So it was like, yeah, uh, like like one of one of them like led to my my core premium my premium core offer, and then one of them was for my lower my lower ticket offer, which was awesome. Um, and we, I I think in the first, and that was literally how I launched my lower ticket offer. Mm -hmm. but I used it almost like a launch, yeah. and um, then I very quickly responded to everybody. I was totally in Facebook jail for a little while. And because I responded too fast and I started hitting people up in the in DMs and I started booking appointments and I enrolled 50 people into my lower end offer in like the first week after that. And then we ended up also enrolling into my listings lab program, which is which is a six thousand dollar program. And I think in total within the first like couple of weeks, we'd done over a hundred thousand just from that one post alone. And it kept working for me. People, yeah, would find we, find we, it. people kept commenting, right? Yeah. Someone would find it, would bump it. And then all of a sudden it would get, it would like almost like resurge. And yeah. it was great. And honestly, it was, it's funny because like, I saw this on like this interview on my calendar and I was like, oh, I should do another mission post pretty soon. <laughs> Do it like it still works. We do yeah. it like every two, three months, and yeah. every time, like usually brings in either five or six figures. Um, but I don't know who's here. If you want to see the post hashtag mission down below, and we'll see if we rack up ten of them. I have it pulled up right here for you guys. So let's get ten comments, boost engagement, get more people on the live to help them. Um, but hashtag mission down below, um, and uh, and uh, we'll share it. Um, I think JC is here. JC, love you. I was literally just talking about how I have the best team in the world. She's amazing. <laughs> um, that's that's awesome. Uh, and definitely, you posted this on September third of two thousand nineteen. So I think it's it's time for a new it's mission. Definitely post. time. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, is like the fundamental stuff that you taught me about Facebook groups. Like I still use it. Right. Yeah. It's, Still, it's still the same stuff that I'm using and it still works. Yeah, yeah. So, I use the same framework when I launch a new lead magnet, when I launch a guide, when I like all of it, it's the same. It just works. It just works. What it is <laughs> just works. <laughs> I love it. So I think we have 10 here. I'm really bad at counting. We might be just under 10. So hashtag mission down below if you want to see the mission post. But let me see if I can flip this around without not taking myself off screen. Uh, let me see. I might need to hide myself. I think it's there. It's just little. Andrew, I think you're gone. <laughs> I think it's just me now and everybody. Yeah, so it basically says like, it, yeah, I was gone. Right. Right. I'll take it. I, <laughs> I uh, damn technology. Um, let me get this around. Uh, we're just gonna have to drop this down. I can pop it. Yeah, back. I'm totally fine. And I, I mean, it's, it's it's not like it's like a big long post. It's like three lines. Yeah. Uh, so it says it's my mission to help, and you have really really good core promises. Um, and I think a lot of, um, what is, what I see a lot in the coaching space is that, uh, usually it's their offer and their messaging that's screwed up. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. it's bluffing. Yeah. Um, yeah. you, you fix the offer and the messaging and then the marketing and the sales just work. Yeah. Um, and you have a really, really good, um, core promise for both your programs, which obviously it's, it's getting them from zero to six figures, six figures to seven figures and seven figures to multiple, multiple seven figures, which is yeah. really good. Um, so your, uh, the mission post, just so I can read it off here, because I, I, when I'm off screen, you can't hear me. So I'll just read it off. Uh, it's my mission to help number one, 25 agents who aren't yet at six figures, uh, hit that before the end of the year. Number two, 25 agents 
who uh, want to double their business, uh, get that before the middle of 2020, who's with me. Um, and that you just executed it perfectly. I've, mm -hmm. I've taught this before and no matter how many times I say like, don't screw with the formula, like don't add pictures, don't add like anything else to it. Like just take the-, the Just execute, yeah. Just, just execute, yeah. just take that and, and do that and you'll get the <laughs> result. Um, so you did that perfectly and, and, and it worked. Yeah. Um, and I think that also like, like the other thing that you teach in terms of like the two step is also mm -hmm. it's genius because the open rates for the messages that I was sending were so much higher mm -hmm. and I've done it before and not done that and just had like a million messages that like people just don't open. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you add them as Facebook friends or whatever, if they don't know that like they're specifically looking for it, they're not going to, it's going to get lost. Yeah. And one analogy that I came up with like just a month ago, I was so proud of myself. Um, but uh, when people comment and you respond back, hey, do I have permission to uh, send you a personal message? It's like ringing a doorbell. Like when you invite somebody over, you don't expect them to just walk through the door. Yeah. Like you expect them to ring the doorbell first. And that's essentially what we're doing with commenting back. And I was like, I came up with that when I was responding back to somebody. I'm like, it's pretty fucking good. Yeah, it's a good analogy. And honestly, like for me, like I don't even write all of that anymore. I'll just say, can I send you a DM? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. Like, and people are just like, yeah, okay, great. Great. Because then it's like, like it's, I'm also not that like marketer who's like hitting people up in their DMs, right? Like yeah. it makes me feel better too. Totally. Yeah. Um, that's one thing for me too. Like, I feel like I'm not market DE. Like I'm not yeah. the best marketer. I find a lot of marketers to be really, they don't have values. Like I, like. Yeah, I, it's true. It's true. I think uh, that like, I would say that like the, the one thing that you do very well is that you actually understand humans. And I think that that's what like you, you, it's kind of like the, like, like the golden rule, like what would you like done to you? That's how you're going to do things. And you're also just going to do it so that it's going to work really well. And I think that that's like, that's kind of the key to it. And I really like marketing yeah. at the end of the day, it's just psychology. Yeah. And so many people are looking for like the strategies and the tactics and the tips and the tricks and the things like that. And at the end of the day, like if you understand human psychology, you can be a really great marketer. Yeah. And I was a psychology major in college. So there you go. That's it. yeah, that's awesome. Um, one thing I want to talk about too, is like you, what do you think it is that, that helps you execute? Like, I think that's one of your, your superpowers. You can mm -hmm. do it and, and do it. Um, is there something that you think that you have that just helps you eliminate those limiting beliefs to just execute? Um, I have, I've worked a lot on like my own sense of worthiness mm. and I think that that is part of it. And the other thing too, is that I, I'm not afraid of some, I'm, I've worked really worked on like, I'm, I'm not afraid of the troll <laughs> and I'm not afraid of like the negative comment. Yeah. I almost like, and, and I did this when I first started this business, because I was like, okay, I'm going to have to show up online even more than I did when I was selling real estate. Mm -hmm. and, um, and immediately I was like, oh my gosh, like that's so terrifying. And so what I did instead is I actually like got myself really excited for my first troll because I was like, okay, when I get my first troll, it means that like I've hit a milestone, like I've made it. Right. Yeah. And so like when I remember when I got the first one, I screenshot it and I sent it to my husband and I was like, yeah. And he was like, you're so weird. <laughs> it was just one of those things that, you know, when I know that one of the keys to what I do is being polarizing, I'm, I'm disrupting the industry that I'm in. Mm. And if I'm not polarizing, then my messaging's not working. Mm. And so if I don't get the hate, I don't get the love. Mm -hmm. And so really at the end of the day, like, and, and all marketing is, it's, it's iteration. It's, yeah. it's trial and error. And yeah. if I put something out and I get, no, and nobody likes it, I'm like, okay, great. I've got the feedback. I won't do that again. Yeah. And that's all it is, is it's just, you know, it's, it's feedback, it's, it's trial. And, um, 
honestly, like because of how specific my messaging is, and I never went into my Facebook group because you taught me this, not going into my Facebook group with a sense of scarcity of like, mm -hmm. I need to let people in just for the sake of the numbers. Mm -hmm. I was very careful about who we let into that group. And so because of that, even now my community manager, like she's, she'll send me a message and be like, I don't know about this person. And usually I'm like, if you don't know about this person, the answer is no. Yeah. Right. And so like, because of that, because it's actually curated, I have like my tribe in there mm -hmm. and it's not just a group of people that are there just for the sake of being there. Yeah. And so when I post something and when I test stuff, like, I have people in there who support, like people who support me and like and comment on stuff that isn't that good. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but because, but, they, because they love me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and quality over quantity. And I think you've yeah. done an amazing job with that and what that, that really helps you build a tribe. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you've seen it with the, the member request, but people inviting people into the group, mm -hmm. you can create that tribe. You get more people to invite people into the group that are good fits for the group. Yeah, so I think sure. you've done an amazing job with that. Um, one thing too, I was just watching a video, uh, one of your videos talking about um, uh, how you used to be so nervous on camera. Yeah. And you used to go to the rooftop and, and yeah. film yourself and so nobody was around you. Um, can you kind of dive into that? What what helped you get over that that fear? Was it just repetition, or was there anything more? Just totally, repetition. Totally, it was rep repetition. I mean, I and and it, it's it is funny because like, I the my husband and I we have like one of those marriages that people are like, oh my god, they like they're they're so like stupid in love with each other. But I and we never fight. But he oh. would come into the room while I was filming a video, and I would yell at him, and I would I and I would get mad at him because I was so uncomfortable. <laughs> That I'd be like, just go away, like let me do this on my own. Mm -hmm. And it just I, I would go to the rooftop of my building and you know, in like the wind, I would like try to record a video because so that I was alone and yeah. nobody could disturb me and no one could see me. But honestly, like I started out with Instagram stories, right? Mm. So I started out with Instagram stories or Facebook stories or whatever, and just kind of getting used to face to camera. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to like before my workouts, like even before I had like a business Instagram, I, I used to have like a fitness Instagram and like I would go and I would like talk about my workout, what I was going to do and like what I was feeling <laughs> about just to kind of get comfortable on like actually talking to a camera. Yeah. And then it kind of went to like recording videos. So recording videos was like the next step. And then um, I remember the first live stream I ever did. I was soaking wet after. I was so nervous and I felt like I was gonna throw up, but I purposely, and I know this about myself, right? If it's on my calendar, I'm gonna do it. So yeah. I gave a specific, just like Andrew does, I gave a specific time and a specific date and a specific topic of like, I'm gonna go live at this time. And then I was like, well, I don't have a choice. Like there's people who are legitimately waiting for me to do this and I can't be that person who doesn't show up. And because all I do is talk about trust and talk about like, you have to build trust. And if you don't show up when you say you're going to show up, what do you do? You break trust. Yeah. So, um, so I did it and I did it. So I did one, one, I did basically did three days in a row at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it was horrifying. I was so nervous, but honestly, like I go live now. I don't even think about it. Yeah. Right. It's just one of those things that like, like today, what the live that you're talking about today, I was sitting here and I was like, I don't really know what I want to talk about with my group today. We'll talk about video. And I like had no idea what I was going to talk about. Yeah. You just hit go live. And then you see the countdown and your brain figures it out. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. I remember my first interview in here and now we've done hundreds of interviews in here. It was so fucking bad. I had all the questions that I wanted to ask him on one screen, and it was with my friend. Yeah. Like, I shouldn't have been nervous. Um, and uh, I had all the questions over here, and I kept looking over, and I tried to do it in a systemized process. And uh, my coach at the time was like, dude, that was fucking awful. <laughs> he, was, he was a pretty bad coach, and, like, he didn't give me any encouragement. But I got the reflection back that that was fucking That wasn't awful. good. And now the interviews aren't that bad. I'm kind of more. Yeah, well, the thing is, is that, like, at the end of the day, especially on social media, it's conversation. That's yeah. all it 
houses, right? right. And and uh, that's something that we teach our agents too. Like real estate agents love to put all kinds of sparkle on on everything. They want branding on the bottom of their live streams, and they want. And I'm like, people don't want that. <laughs> if if it looks like an ad and it talks like an ad, it's you are you are the perfect antidote for real estate agents to get over their perfectionism. Oh yeah, that's that's perfect. <laughs> no, I like, talk about it all the time. Yeah. yeah. Actually, in the mindset section of our program, we talk about perfectionism just being a form of procrastination. Mm -hmm. And our friend Kara actually today wrote something on her Instagram and she she basically said your it like procr like you your perfectionism is a form of self-abuse because it turns into procrastination and you're actually just playing small and you're hurting yourself mm -hmm. and you're hurting your business. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's a really, really scary, but also very accurate way of, of putting it. Yeah. And, I mean, I've gone live with like in my pajamas, I've gone live with like, like hair that had not been washed in many, many days. <laughs> like, yeah. It's one of those things that it's about the message. It's not about you. Oh, so good. Yeah. I, uh, I just went live last night smoking hookah. Which I'm not proud of. It's one of my bad habits now. But uh, just, I almost went live with smoking hookah with my shirt off while sunbathing. Uh, so it doesn't matter. Just go live. It's about the message. Just go live. It's about the message. It's not. It's and that's the thing, right? Like that's why people are afraid of video or afraid of of putting putting themselves out there because they're afraid at the end of the day that like their worst criticism of themselves is going to be reflected back. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's really, it's not about you. It's about the people who you're actually helping and the, and the message that you're, that you're here to put out there. So that's really, when you, when you, when you switch that focus and you stop making it about your own ego, it, yeah. it makes it so much easier. Yeah. I love it. What, one thing I want to bring up too, and one thing why I think like you're so successful is uh, commitment and certainty that it's going to work. Like, it has to. Yeah, exactly. Just going up at, you just go at a hundred miles per hour and you just commit and, and you go for it. Um, and I think that's what you did with your Facebook group where mm -hmm. people's Facebook groups fail because they don't commit. They don't go for it and just be consistent with showing up and providing content to their audience. Um, but I, I want to bring that up because that's why you're so successful in life and in your Facebook group is that you commit and you're hundred percent certain that it's, it's going to work. I think that's the simple 80, 20 formula, like just commit and be certain. Right. Well, and if the thing is, if you don't believe it's going to not, it's going to work, it's not going to work. Yeah. Right? And so I think a lot of it is, you know, my Facebook group is probably the platform that I nurture the, I'm the most consistently. I have <laughs> more followers on Instagram. But I like I'll show up on Instagram stories every day, but I I post every single day in my Facebook group mm -hmm. because my Facebook group is my income generating organic platform. Yeah. And they fucking love you. Because I show up. Because you show up. Yeah. Because I show up. And because <laughs> And, and I'm very careful, like most real estate groups are like essentially just promotion feeds. Here's mm -hmm. my listing in florida when like three quarters of the people who are in the group are not in florida and it's you know it's all it is is i you know i have a referral and i think referral passing is fine but most groups are not actually providing value mm -hmm. and not shifting people's mindset in terms of like what's actually possible as well so i think what ends up happening so so often especially in real estate groups people aren't kind and we are very like we we monitor that group like crazy if someone's rude they're out like there is no space there is another real estate facebook group um and it is massive it's huge but it is not a nice environment mm -hmm. and i think that like that's one of the things too is that we are a, an incredibly supportive company in general mm -hmm. but we're also like that that is translated and that's one of the things that jc is also consistently helping me with is that like the way that we actually op operate and who we actually are gets translated everywhere into our programs into the facebook group mm -hmm. everywhere so people feel like the way that i've always kind of thought about it is like my 
my my lead gen ads are my billboard my facebook yeah. groups my living room mm -hmm. and because of that like how would i treat people and how do i want to support people like as though they were so sitting in my living room with me right yeah. and so like I wouldn't invite someone over and then just have them sit by themselves in my living room. So like I got to show up every day and I, I need to give them reason also to interact. I think yeah. a lot of the time people just throw a bunch of call to actions up and they think that because they've thrown a call to action up that someone should respond. And that's not the way that human beings work. Yeah. So it's like, what can I do so that you actually want to engage and actually want to help me grow this community? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a ratio. You provide a lot of value, you can provide more call to actions. Yeah. You provide little value, a lot of call to actions, you come off looking like a douche. 100%. Uh, yeah. yeah. We, uh, we have one question here for you, yes. Jessica. If you guys have any questions for Jessica, drop them down below right now. Uh, we'll get them answered. Um, but I wish I could see who this was. I'm so sorry that I don't know. Um, but uh, he or she is saying, did you ever consider putting all of the marketing knowledge into real estate negotiations? Why? Okay, I'm not 100% sure what the question is, so I'm going to answer it both ways. Yeah. <laughs> um, so one of, them, one of the ways could be like, did you ever decide to do that for yourself as a realtor? And I did. So if you were a little late coming on, I, was my, I myself was a realtor for 15 years. So everything I teach is something that I've teached, I'm, I've embodied, I've done myself, and now I teach. Um, and so, and then the other way to answer that question is in terms of like actually selling how to negotiate in real estate. And that is something that we do teach in our programs. We teach sales conversations. We teach, we teach everything to get like essentially like the golf analogy that we use, right? Marketing is to, is the drive. It gets the ball on the green and then sales is the putt. It gets the ball in the hole. So we teach both, but a lot of the time, the issues that most agents have is actually not getting the ball in the hole. It's actually just getting the ball on the green. So mm -hmm. um, that's, and to be honest, marketing from a messaging perspective, that's what people want to buy. So we sell them what they want, we give them what they need. So yeah. we sell them the getting the ball on the green, and then we also give them how to get the ball in the hole. I hope yeah. that was, uh, like that made sense. That made sense. That, okay. was good. <laughs> <laughs> that was a perfect answer. And he said, uh, sorry, that was, uh, Mateo, thank you. Uh, I, I, so we both invested a lot into mentorship and masterminds. Yeah. Um, and, um, I think that's what has equipped us to know what we should put in our own and mm -hmm. has equipped us to be able to charge higher prices. Mm -hmm. Um, and when you were crafting your offer, what were some elements like your high ticket mastermind offer? What were some elements that you're like, we need this in the mastermind and what were some elements of like oh, we need to avoid this at all costs. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I, and you're right, I've, I've been in a lot, I, I spend about $250,000 a year in coaching yeah. for myself. I'm around there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know you are. <laughs> um, and so like for me, it was very much like, what have, are things that have been really effective for me, but keeping in mind that I don't learn the same way that other people do, right? Yeah. And, and and I also don't necessarily always get stuck at the same places that other people do. So, you know, I have a really great team who also, I didn't, I did not craft this. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't create the container in a vacuum. I, I asked so I asked people what they needed and what they wanted. I went to my team. My team are also like incredibly brilliant people. And then I also looked at like what I also wanted to deliver. Mm -hmm. So there was like a matter of like what's going to be most effective for them and what's going to keep me engaged and what's going to be fun for me. So mm -hmm. we do like part of our highest level, our um, $50,000, $60,000 program is basically like it's a three day intensive where we build out everything that's in the listings lab in three days, but we do it at a spa. Mm. And I do that because like, I want, I, I came up with that at a spa with my husband. And I was like, how can we make this into work? 
<laughs> so good. So we do that. And right now we're doing them virtually, obviously, but yeah. um, like that was the idea that like if somebody wanted to like go to Niagara Falls and wanted to like go gamble a little bit and have a little bit of fun, that we would do that as well as execute. So mm -hmm. like I don't work with anybody who I wouldn't actually want to hang out with. So that's also like we like if somebody is like not my people, you're not my people and that's okay. But like you're not coming into that level of mastermind because like I need to want to hang out with you. And and so we are like as much as like I'm selective about that, like we've built that all of that in. The other thing that's been really helpful too is like there's elements of group, but there's also elements of one on one. So mm -hmm. you know, we start every one of these, you know, year long programs with a kickoff call going through mission, vision, core values. And then, because a lot of the time, like we can, we don't know what direction we're going if we don't know where we're aiming. Mm -hmm. So we start out there and then everyone's execution, we use five different pillars that we, for the most part, like go through in that year long program, mm -hmm. but everybody needs the pillars at different times, right? Some people actually need lead gen and marketing first. Other people need mindset first. Other people need systems and operations first. So. At like we at we're we're executing with different people in in a different order, and I think that that's been something that I know for me going through some programs where they're like, "Here's the order that you have to go through everything," and I'm like, "Okay, hey, great," but like I don't actually need this yet. Yeah, I actually need this other thing that you're telling me we're doing in six months. I need that now. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why we wanted it to be as customizable as possible, so that like we're literally giving them we're solving the biggest pain first mm -hmm. and then everything else can kind of build on top of that. So good. So, um, with that's what I've found with the 12 month program, mm -hmm. with like our 90 day program, um, in our course, it's very much a step-by-step -step process. Yeah. Like you go through these, but for the year long program, um, it's exactly what you're saying. It's like, you have all these elements and throughout mm -hmm. the year, you're probably going to have to go through each of these. Yeah. but it's very much like it's not linear not everybody is starting at the same point it's yeah. you get what you need right now um mm -hmm. i love how you brought that up well and you and i have also been in we've actually andrew and i you, you and i've been in quite a few programs that are the same programs yeah and, <laughs> yeah we've actually like gone down a very similar path and those programs really expensive <laughs> so expensive programs and you know what yeah. some of them were great and some of them were really terrible mm -hmm. yeah. so i think that like you and i have actually learned what not to do what not to do but also like yeah. what, what really works yeah yeah, and yeah. I think that's for me like one of the first things that i said was, was like okay if i'm going to start a high-end program like this i have to invest in one because i gotta know like i can't ever ask anybody to to do something that i haven't myself done yeah Right. So um, that like that's been that's been really cool for me, too, because even before we got we went live, like for anybody, you guys weren't here, but um, we were talking about like what's like what's next. Yeah. <laughs> and, and not surprisingly, we, we both had the same things in, in our heads. We were like we like the same names popped up for both of us. Yeah. So I think that it's really important that. Um, you know that those invest like those investments i think a lot of people look at them as risk mm -hmm. they're only risky if you don't trust yourself to to like even the bad ones that i've invested in i'm actually super grateful for because the networking and the people that i yes. met from yep. those were worth it yep same i uh i mean we wouldn't have met if it wasn't we wouldn't have met. that one mastermind that we yeah. joined um and a couple of people that have commented down below um are like really good friends now that came from that mastermind mm -hmm. uh i think it's just so powerful to one create masterminds and to join masterminds because it's the network sometimes their skills suck uh and sometimes they're not very good coaches but the network that comes with it like for me yeah. it has always been return on investment 100 percent. and honestly like the number of people that i've personally hired that I learned that I met in that mastermind. Yeah. It's like shocking. Yeah. Like Same. my business wouldn't be where it is if I hadn't hired those people and if I hadn't joined that mastermind. So yeah. totally worth it. Um, I think there's another question here for me. 
how many times a week are you presenting in your high ticket versus your free Facebook group? So I post in my free Facebook group every day. Um, I so at the beginning of this whole COVID situation, I did a I like I delivered like crazy. I did like live Zoom trainings and like took people through like step by step trainings. Well, I think I did like ten or twelve of them. Um, it, like that was really exhausting for me. So mm -hmm. I also was aware that like that wasn't that wasn't going to be forever. But it re-engaged that group like crazy. Like there were people who like were not as engaged, and it super engaged them. Um, I follow what Andrew teaches. Like I go live or I do videos like once like twice twice a week. Um, and then, you know, the rest of it is like engagement posts and value content and anything else that I build. Like if I'm building something for my marketing, it goes to my Facebook group first. Um, and then in terms of my, my, my core, like my premium core offer, like the listings lab program, um, in terms of like how it's built, we have two weekly calls. One of them is, one of them is with me. And then the other one is a marketing, like a basically an ad clinic that's run by my head of marketing. So we have the two calls a week, and then we also have uh, like a paid Facebook group in for, for support. So that's how that one's run. Whereas like in my higher end programs, um, there's one on one calls. There's um, there's a, there's a separate Facebook group. They have like some of them have Boxer support with me. It's like a totally different level of support. Mm. So good. Um, if you guys have any last minute questions, please drop them down below. I end all my interviews on one question, which is, uh, what's, uh, what have we not asked you that we should have asked you during this interview? Since you wouldn't do this, I'm going to do this. So, um, why do, why do I refer to Andrew? Okay. So I actually have referred my best friend, one of my best friends. I was, she, she messaged me and she's like, who do I need to work with? I was like, you need to work with Andrew. Okay, so why do I do that? And the reason why I do is because his stuff works. And he's also one of the most trustworthy human beings I've ever met. So like when I need something and it's something that like I never worry that like Andrew's going to like sell me something that I don't need or, you know, try to like like rope me into something different. He is one of the most like collaborative humans I've ever met. And, and I was telling him, I messaged him earlier today, like I had a dream last night that Andrew and I were boating <laughs> and like, and like it, it's because like, I have just so much respect and so much admiration for the level of like how much he gives a shit. And so like, for me, like coming on here in front of your audience, like that's the one thing that I want them to know about you is that like his give a shit factor is super high. And he cares deeply about everybody who he works with. Thank you so much. I was not expecting that. You are. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. We uh, we have a few more questions. So mm -hmm. let's answer these questions. Do do you have the time? I want to respond. Of course, I do. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we have. Robert here asking, um, wait, where, how to network at events um, mm -hmm. would be a great training. Uh, it always seems so superficial <clears throat> and always uh, thinking, I'm not sure what value I can offer. Do you have any quick tips on networking at events? Um, I usually ask somebody, ask the person who, is running the event if you know them or i'm getting a little frog um who you should know in the room mm. i always do that who do i who who, who should i know here mm. and then go and find those people and introduce yourself mm. because so if there's like a thousand people there like you're not going to meet everybody and you might actually meet, miss that one person who you really should have met yeah that, that's really good i love it um, what I would say to that is, uh, to that question, um, is ask questions, be genuinely curious about the person. Um, and if it makes sense, like if you think you, you can help them or your offer can help them, um, schedule a call for after the event, um, and make sure that you guys get it on, on the calendar. Um, but it starts with being genuinely curious about the person. 
um, if you can help them, then um, get the uh, get something on the calendar for after the event or meeting up um, uh, that night or something like that. The other thing that I would say is like, and I know this is cliche, but like be the client that you want to attract. So if you were running an event, how would you want someone to show up to that event? You'd want them to get on the mic. You'd want them to ask questions. And mm -hmm. honestly, if you are visible, you get on the mic, you ask questions, you do, you, you put yourself out there, more people are going to be drawn to you as well. Mm -hmm. So good. Um, somebody's just, who is this? Somebody's just asking me, what am I using to stream live? Uh, this is just be live. Um, some people talk shit about this, the be live streaming service. I like it. I've used it for two years, um, but I like uh, be live. Um, yeah, don't pitch, big mistake. Um, but yeah, Jessica, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your mission post. If you guys missed that, uh, the replay will be available. If you got any value, uh, out of this live, um, hit that heart button, hit that like button, show some love. Um, and uh, Jessica, if, if anybody wants to connect with you, um, how should they how should they go about that? Um, please, if you're not a real estate agent, don't try to join my Facebook group. <laughs> um, you won't be accepted. You will not be accepted. Um, yeah. You can friend me on Facebook. I still got some space and um, Instagram. My name, my handle on Instagram is just at Jess Linovel, L E N O U V E L. Amazing. Jessica, thank you so much. Thank you. Cool. See you guys. Wait.